Welcome back. I um, wanted to do a video kind of revisiting the lease versus company driver topic. And doing this because um, I still continue to get a lot of questions about it. And the primary people that I get questions about are people who are going to be new um, to Prime. And first of all, I, I, I want to thank everybody who does ask questions. I do want to remind you that if you have a question, there's a couple of different ways that you can get a hold of me. So, first of all, obviously comment on a video. Um, probably that's the least likely way that I will get back to you um, for whatever reason. And if if you comment on a video and I don't get back to you, my apologies. Um, for whatever reason, YouTube's um, notification system. I've got it set to alert me when I get new comments. I will come back to a video and see that somebody commented a month ago and I never saw a notification for it. So I do apologize if I don't see that you commented. I don't always get the notifications. That's just a YouTube thing. Uh, you can send me a message through YouTube. You have to go to uh, my channel and you can uh, to the, the home page of the channel and you can send messages that way. Um, and then I'm on a couple of the Facebook groups for Prime, um, Prime Tanker Yankers. I'm on that a lot. And then um, Primetime Grinders, I believe, is the other one that I'm on. Uh, not on all of them, though, but if you search the users, obviously, channel name is my name. And you can send me a message that way. That is also a little bit least, uh, a little, little less likely to get to me because... Um, you know, you go through the filtered message system, uh, so I don't immediately get a notification that way. So, uh, at any rate, if you want to send a message or if you want to ask a question directly, I'm, I'm always willing to, uh, to try and help you out. But the bottom line is I still get a ton of questions about lease versus company and I'm kind of revising what my advice is. And the reason for it is when you do something for a while, you, you tend to have a different opinion about things. And so I may go back and revisit some of these videos. I've kind of been thinking about that lately. I just kind of redoing some of the videos that I've already done um, and say, hey, you know, a year later, do I still feel the same way? This is not necessarily a change on whether you should be a lease driver or should be a company driver. This is just some additional information. And that, that key piece to me is if you are coming to Prime, and, and this came about when I did my video on, on local driving. A lot of guys come to Prime, guys and gals come to Prime and say, I want to get my year experience and then go do something else. If that's your goal with coming to Prime, um, I don't think leasing is in your best interest. And there's a very specific reason for this. Um, the, the reason is a lease through Prime, and this is one of the reasons you, you hear a lot of people complaining about leasing at Prime, is they don't really understand how pay works. You're not getting all of the money for your load when you deliver that load a small percentage of the revenue that you are earning as a lease driver is held back by Prime and paid out at the end of lease as a lease completion bonus because Prime's doing that for a couple different reasons. They want people to finish a four-year lease for tanker and for flatbed, a three-year lease for reefer. Uh, they also want to hold some money in reserve for repairs of the truck. So a small percentage of money is held aside each week. And if you go through um, my video on how does leasing work that I very, very detailed go through, um, some of the information is in there. Some of it you have to know how it works so that you can figure out how much money you're going to get back at the end of the lease. And I can tell you how much money I currently would get back if my end of lease was today. 
But even there, it's, it's not an accurate answer because I don't know how much repairs would be, cleaning of the truck would be, um, things like that. But the bottom line is, let's just say that my end of lease is tomorrow. I just ran, ran my last load. I'm going to be cleaning out my truck, turning it in tomorrow. So I'm taking everything out of my truck, and then tomorrow I'm going to do an end of lease inspection. I just requested the total from Prime, um, and I know the way you can get a, a rough estimate for what the amount is. Um, so if you're going to complete a lease, what you need to do is your lease to date miles, and that's not looking at the odometer on the truck, that's on your settlement sheet. Your lease to date miles times five and a quarter cents, cents five and a quarter cents per mile. That's how much you're getting paid at the end of lease is five and a quarter cents per mile. Um, if you're in a team, you know, I, I've mentioned the excess mileage charge. Um, you can, if you go over a certain amount of miles and really only team drivers are gonna ever go over that amount, um, you can get money back as an excess mileage charge. And then the tire fund unless you need new tires on your truck. They're gonna take money out, first of all. So at any rate, all that money combined right now for me, and I'm a year and seven months into a four year lease, totals $10,863.81. That's how much money I have earned and put into that account that Prime holds. It's accrued on each trip that I've done, and it's sitting there for the end of my lease. So, if my lease ended tomorrow and I was turning my truck in, Prime would have $10,863.81 waiting for me. Before they wrote me a check for that dollar amount, they would check the tires, see if they needed to be replaced. If they need to be replaced, ding off the amount for the replacement tires off of the $10,863. Any other repairs on the truck, that comes off of the total. Now, I'm talking about a year and seven months out of a four-year lease. By the end of four years, $25,000 in that balance, perhaps. Maybe you still need a whole new set of tires, all six tires on the truck. Maybe you've got $5,000 in repairs that need to be done. But you could still walk away with ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 as a check coming back to you. And that is money that you have earned. That is not a gift from Prime. That is money that you have earned as a lease driver over the four-year period. They're just hanging on to it in case there's damage to the truck. And there are going to be guys who do $20,000 in damage to a truck and they might not get anything back at the end of a lease. But the bottom line is, if you are not going to complete a lease, and here's where I advise, if you're coming to Prime and saying, I'm gonna stay one year, and then I'm gonna go do something else to not be a lease driver. That $10,863.81, now, same scenario, but let's keep my end of lease in August of 2019. If I turn my truck in tomorrow, I do not get any of the $10,863.81. Prime keeps that money. The tire fund stays with the truck so that the next driver, when they need truck, because there's these are not brand new tires, so anywhere that's on the tires, if the new driver needs to uh, address the tires, that gets add it in as a used truck. Your used truck, when you lease, it's gonna have an existing tire fund. And the rest of the money, because you forfeited your lease completion bonus, goes back to Prime. Now, on top of that, on top of you earning $10,000 that you're not gonna be able to take home, any repairs that I was just talking about? Let's say, and again, let's just throw an estimate, $5,000 in repairs. I, probably way high on a truck that's a year and seven months old. 
but let's just say there's five thousand dollars in repairs so number one you're losing out on your ten thousand eight hundred sixty three dollars in change that you would have gotten if you had completed your lease and then it was knocked down so you're gonna earn five thousand eight hundred sixty three dollars and eighty one cents because you had five thousand dollars in repairs you don't get the five thousand eight hundred and sixty three dollars because you didn't complete the lease and they're gonna send you a bill for five thousand dollars for all of the damage that you caused while you leased the truck so there's a double whammy if you do not complete a lease and this is why to some extent leasing gets a bad name because people don't understand the money that is being held aside that some of the amount of money that you can earn as a lease driver is held off to the end of the lease the lease completion bonus and that's why if you have no intention of completing a lease I can't in good faith recommend leasing because you're going to turn into truck before the end of lease and you're going to lose out on all this extra money that you have set aside and you're going to get a bill for any damage so if your intent is to come to prime drive for a year and then move on to something else you really should just do it as a company driver because you're you're not gonna associate you're not gonna incur the five thousand dollars in damage. And again, I'm just throwing five thousand out as a number. It could be a thousand. It could be five hundred dollars. It could be ten thousand. I'm just throwing a number. You're not gonna incur that damage bill for turning in a truck early, and you're gonna get every penny that you earn while you're driving the truck. So, bottom line. Leasing is set up for you to complete a lease to earn the maximum amount of money. If you don't intend on completing a lease, you should not lease. Um, now, that said, and real quick on this topic, it's fine to change your mind. And you can change your mind at orientation. You can change your mind in training. You can change your mind after you've driven for a week, a month, a year, after you've been a company driver for a while and say, as an example, I came to Prime and I said, there's not a chance you could get me to lease a truck. I'm not doing it. You can't make me. During orientation, I was told, best way we can get you home, this is when I lived in Michigan, would be to drive this dedicated account and we could get you home every other weekend maybe even every weekend to Michigan. And then, of course, after doing it for three months, I moved to Indiana and I go home every day. So if you want to do that, you have to lease a truck. And I thought, okay, well, I don't want to lease, but I want home time. So I reconsidered my options and leasing made sense for me. And now here I am, two years after coming to Prime, and I now have this other realization about leasing, that if you have no intention of completing a lease, I don't think you should lease. Now, I had made that decision that I was gonna stay with Prime through the end of my lease at, at bare minimum, that's my intent, is August of 2019, uh, is to stay with Prime, but you start to understand the consequences of not staying with Prime is, boy, you lose out on a lot of money. And not only do you lose out on money, it's that double whammy. You lose out on the lease completion bonus, plus you get sent a bill. As opposed to stay with Prime through the end of your lease, any damage is taken out of your lease completion bonus and you're going to get some money back. That's just some money. You might get $20,000 back. So, lease versus company revisited. Primary thing I want you to take out of this, if your intention is to come to Prime for a year and move on, please be a company driver. Because I don't wanna see somebody complaining they were put in the hole, they're, they're, they've got bills being sent to them by Prime because they didn't understand that when they turned the truck in before end of lease, they were gonna, Oh, five thousand dollars in damage, or four thousand, or two thousand, or 
$150, whatever it is, that's just the fact of the matter. If you're coming to Prime and you think, I'm going to be here at least for four years, three years on the reefer side, or longer, then you can consider, and I'm not saying that automatically means you should lease, but I'm saying that would be a bare minimum to start thinking about leasing. You have to be willing to be... Now, that also being said, and real quick on this topic, there are shorter leases. Used trucks are not the full three or four year length. When you start out, it's going to be very rare to get a brand new truck. Um, as an example, the first truck that I leased, the Freightliner that I have the video of, um, had been in service for nine months, so it was only a three year and three month lease. Um, there will be trucks that are, you know, if I turned to this truck in today, it would have two years and five months left on the lease. So there will be trucks available, and I'll put the link in the description. Success Leasing has a website. They keep the inventory on there. The only thing I will note about the inventory um, for Success Leasing, if you're coming to Prime, do not get your heart set on a truck that is on their website. Um those trucks and if you follow that i mean if you check on that page daily you'll see turnover that you know on monday they're going to plop eight reefer trucks on by tuesday there might be one or two left because that's how quickly trucks come and go on that website so don't see a you know a, a nice silver one that you think is just fantastic because we got a Peter built in and it's brand new and it's automatic and all this and then you think oh when I come here in six months it's going to be there and I'll, I'll take that one <laughs> it's going to be long gone in six months it'll be gone in a week let alone um, in, in six months company versus uh, lease revisited thanks for watching if you want to come to prime another link in the description will take you directly to the application to come drive thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you again next week